Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Robert Stickle. I'm also joined by my colleague, Jim Patterson. Jim will be today's presenter and will discuss the topic of optimizing new product development with one plan product portfolio management. This webinar is a new addition to our series of product portfolio management videos. So if you enjoy this webinar, feel free to watch the others we have available on our channel and look towards the next installment, which we'll be releasing soon. And as always, I hope that today's presentation grants you some insight into the world of project and portfolio management and gets you excited for the new developments happening within the industry and here at OnePlan. Thank you again. I would now turn the presentation over to Jim. Thanks, Robert, and welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, you know, in this age of digital transformation and um, modern development in portfolio management, People are moving more and more towards more of a product orientation, away from more of a project orientation in the way they do portfolio management. We'll talk about some of the ideas and concepts around that today and show you how one plan actually addresses those things for uh, the modern customer. So with that, let's just start with the modern landscape itself and the new challenges that we have across the enterprise. Now, part of the reason that people are changing the way they do things is because the pace of change is increasing. And the speed at which we need to innovate uh, has to keep pace with that uh, pace of change in the marketplace. There's also higher expectations of customers, meaning we have to deliver the right things in the right time and uh, with the right access to the consumer in order to succeed in our businesses today. On top of that, even though the needs may become more complex, there is demand for simplicity. You know, in this app culture today, where people are used to just uh, installing an app on their mobile device and be able to work with things right away, even though the science and the technology behind our solutions maybe get more complex, the user experience needs to become more simple because that's what the market demands. And there's also the rise of competition that we have to stay ahead of when it comes to speed of innovation and development. Um, in the old days, you know, you needed to have significant assets sometimes in some markets to be able to uh, reasonably compete with some of the big boys in the marketplace. Now, that being said, with the advent of cloud and the access to resources to even small startups, the rise of our competition could even be that small startup or they could be the next innovator or the next wave uh, and the next hot thing in your market. And we got to give time to value. We have to deliver things quickly and on time and in responsiveness to the way the current market is and provide value with everything that we deliver. And this impacts everybody in the organization, whether it be the executives that have to uh, uh, develop the strategies and the business models for how we're going to approach that market, the PMOs that have to manage an increasingly diverse amount of uh, project types uh, to deliver these things in alignment with those strategies, the actual product development, which could be software development as well, and those people that actually have to deliver on the things that we're doing, and the support we have to provide so that we keep our consumers in, uh, uh, happy uh, out there and we delight them. So with that type of landscape, some of the challenges are that you know, as we advance in product development and specifically new product development, is that there's a lot of digital initiatives going on in, a lot, um, in alignment with those. And the reality is, is that um, many enterprises are delivering suboptimal returns for these digital initiatives because a lot of the different dimensions aren't being considered. Now, product management, you know, owning specific products, you know, may tend to focus solely on their specific product or initiatives without regard to integration across all the different products or product lines that are going in the organization. And we've got to get better at that if we're going to succeed in this day and age. And that, you know, the move towards more agile approaches with the idea of having dedicated agile teams that are specialized on all dimensions of delivering those products is not really a reality today because organizations are still shifting and sharing resources and not really having dedicated teams or stable teams, as they call it. Now, some of the recommendations that come from uh, the Gartner Group in this regard, uh, from that survey that uh, showed those issues up front, is that we need to define a shared vision for realizing strategic objectives, meaning if we have multiple products and multiple product lines, we have to share a vision that our executives put forth for us in achieving the outcomes and the strategies that we're trying to achieve as an organization as a whole. And to do that, we need to improve coordination and engagement across our products and product lines, mitigating inconsistencies or collisions or things that might uh, hinder one another as we try to succeed across all those areas of the company. And that means we have to ensure a, a more effective orchestration across product delivery, collaborating with product managers or teams 
to proactively address any such encumbrances or blockers or things that we might have or any resource contention or technological contention that we might have. So organizations more and more are evolving to a product orientation and more agile approaches. And they're doing this by breaking work into smaller pieces and chunks that are easier to manage and deliver and deliver more quickly. And we're taking more iterative approaches so that we can get the value to the customer sooner. And not only that, as things change as quickly as they do today, if we deliver smaller and more iteratively, if things change in front of us, we can then adapt and pivot as we need to, to meet the needs in a correct way and not miss the mark and deliver the wrong things to our customers. And then organizations and performance management must also transform. You know, the ways we used to look at things in traditional project and portfolio management uh, may not be, you know, conducive anymore. We'll talk a little bit more about that as well. We want to have the metrics that drive the outcomes that we're looking for. So changing the model, you know, the old days of traditional project plans in a more waterfall fashion. Uh, sometimes we had large product development projects that you know, were fairly monolithic that might have taken months or years to, de to develop. And the idea there would be you build this plan, you lock in the plan, you baseline or budget that plan, and then you'd manage to that over that long duration of that journey. Now, the world doesn't sit still. Things change around us. And things like change orders and things were uh, uh, a bad word in, in that world. Um, you know, hence the idea of those building blocks in the middle to break these things into smaller chunks and more manageable responsive chunks and deliver incrementally is really about, instead of having these large project plans, is to having these product roadmaps for our different products or product lines that allow us to continuously deliver iteratively against that, whether they be releases or features against those products. And the idea is to do that in a different fashion and even fund those things a little bit differently. So to do this, we would define a product structure in our portfolio. And we would align, say, product families with individual products within those families and understand who the stakeholders and the customers are what assigned teams are specialized to work on those different areas and have product roadmaps that we all agree on and budgets at the higher level that we can agree to and then allocate them over the course of time in those smaller chunks or iterations as we deliver against those product line roadmaps. Now, what is a product? You know, it may not just be a hard tangible good that we sell. It's anything that serves a customer, whether it be internal or external in our organizations. It deliver cap delivers capabilities that customers value. It's something that you can clearly name and clearly define. It's something that you can put your arm around. And it can even be something like a repeatable service that somebody wants to consume. It could even be a platform technology-wise that somebody um, wants to subscribe to or buy. And it's anything that can be bought or sold or subscribed to. Now, it likely has competitors as well because, to be quite honest, if we're the only one selling it, we'd have to ask ourselves, why is no one else wanting to be in this marketplace? Is there something unique about our capabilities or is there something that maybe we're thinking and going down the wrong line? So the idea of the product should probably have one or more of these different dimensions uh, associated with it. So in a product model, ideally these days, you'd have stable autonomous teams that specialize in a particular product or product line. And then you have these product managers that basically will function in a agreed to product roadmap for their own product, as well as have it, how it fits in with the overall set of products that an organization might have so we can coordinate and collaborate like we talked about earlier on. And the key here is if we do these things and have a customer focus, our focus should be about keeping our customers and our stakeholders happy and be uh, uh, passionate about delivering value and quality to our customers and our stakeholders. Now this product orientation, uh, moving away from maybe a strictly project orientation is well underway. You know, the Gartner Group uh, uh, it has done some surveys and projections over time, and it's an increasing percentage of depth of product orientation that's going on within our organizations today, especially as we move more towards digital transformation. The key here is that as we make this move, that older model on the left, longer term plans, we might deliver the right thing and we might deliver value uh, appropriately, maybe, because things may change while we're doing those things and we may not want to change course and we may not deliver the right thing uh, at the end of the day. With the idea of a more product-oriented, roadmap-oriented focus where we deliver incrementally, we're funding 
um, minimum viable products or MVPs and maybe releases or different features incrementally over time so that the investment is not a big investment up front with a big bang at the end that hopefully delivers. It's incrementally funding each of these iterations and getting value immediately after that iteration is done. So the expenditure of the dollars is more commensurate with when we receive the value. Now, product-centric goals. Now, why organizations go product-centric? The Gartner Group found in uh, surveying respondents that the three of the top ones are time to market or value, to respond faster to changing or unclear requirements, and respond faster to changing priorities. Once again, it's the speed and the responsiveness, making sure that we're delivering the right things to the customers. So what they found in surveying um, uh, people out in the marketplace, it's consistent with the concepts that we were talking about in the prior slides. Now, to accomplish this successfully, it's more than just putting in a methodology. Organizations must change, and it affects not only the technologies, but the people and the stakeholders and the culture as well. Um, this is a shift from the way people, many people have traditionally done project-oriented portfolio management. And the key is we can't just hope that it happens. You know, this cartoon on the right is what if we don't change at all and just something magical happens? Uh, we don't have time or can afford the risk of waiting. We have to do the things that make us competitive and relevant in our own marketplaces and uh, to make sure that we don't uh, lose the customer base that we have or the opportunity for future customers that we might uh, have as prospective uh, potential. Now, projects versus products, I won't go through all of these, but the focus does change. So instead of funding these things on individual granular project basis, you know, we may be, you know, fund things at a higher level based on business need and ROI on a product line. And the different features or releases we have just consume parts of that budget. And we want to deliver about value and the things around that. So, you know, the dimensions of these things change is that, you know, a, a product focus delivers continuous value over the life cycle of a product, not a distinct end of a specific project. You know, we may use more lean and agile approaches and agile teams to value, uh, to make sure that that value is delivered in a speedy fashion. And we want to be able to deliver business outcomes. So we deliver the most valuable thing next, not just the thing that keeps us on time or on budget or minimizes risk. So the key is that there's different dimensions here that we must look at. So instead of a project plan in the old fashion, we have product roadmaps and team backlogs. As far as projects being in the old world, we have minimum viable product and releases. The old you know, progress measurements of earned value man uh, management turn into things like burn rates and backlogs. And instead of stage gates, we look at continuous delivery and release trains and things like that. So it is a culture shift for us to get through as we go, go, go on through this whole thing. But if we do this right, there are benefits to doing this that product teams can deliver measurable value sooner, and that's always a good thing. Product roadmaps can be flexible and change as we learn more or as the situation on the ground changes in front of us. You know, we end up, we can end up fixing our capacity with our stable teams and then make our stakeholders prioritize the things that they want first so that we then fit into the capacity that we have rather than overloading our capacity and delivering things um, suboptimally. Uh, product teams also understand better as they get closer and more specialized in what they're doing of what they need to do to delight their customers and what's needed to make sure that they hit the mark. And then also because we're delivering incrementally in smaller chunks, uh, testing for quality gets easier because we're not touching so many different things at any one given time and we have specific themes and focus areas. So the quality tends to be better as we come out. And then the product teams can flex with changing conditions. If some product lines start taking off or some products start getting more popular and other ones start to decline, we can flex our teams and the way we staff those things uh, flexibly uh, as we need to uh, for the priorities of the business and the marketplace. And then also these types of approaches tend to lead to flatter organizations with fewer overhead so that we end up being more responsive and things uh, don't slow down uh, through bureaucracy uh, as we try to make, this, make these things happen. So if we take this product orientation, we need to go into this mode of product portfolio management. Uh, and that's what we're here to talk about with one plant today. And product portfolio management is about developing and implementing a comprehensive and profitable business strategy for your company's entire product line. So it's to make it as strong as it possibly can be for, uh, for your organization. And it goes beyond 
just managing individual products and doing individual project management and doing the day-to-day -day product and pr product management around that. It's really understanding the goals and benefits of product portfolio management so that you can boost your bottom line, but also transform your company from top to bottom. You know, it's really about a process of looking at every product a company offers and see how well it meets your company goals. It's also about envisioning future product strategies for growth and innovating as well. So strong portfolio management in the product arena involves ongoing analysis of the performance of your current products as well as market trends for the development of future products, meaning we've got to put enough emphasis on the things that are going well for us and things that are working, but we have to be willing to jettison things that are starting to trend down and then innovate enough so that we can bring new products to market. And this really comes to evaluating a comprehensive portfolio of all these things and all of these alternatives. So as part of product portfolio management, decisions are made about which product lines to expand, which to shrink, and what other opportunities you might pursue. Now, the strategic objectives of portfolio management is to save um, uh, company resources while driving revenue, right? Do things in a cost-effective way while maximizing your revenue. Um, you know, and this may be different for different types of companies. For well-established companies with diverse portfolio portfolios, you might typically build your product portfolio strategy around expansion of what you're doing, an expansion of markets. Alternatively, a company might expand by uh, marketing existing products to new audiences, expanding the footprint up there and finding new people that might want our existing products. Some companies might strategize to acquire other businesses that have other technologies or businesses uh, or, or products that may enhance what they're already doing. While smaller companies who are emerging with fewer resources might focus mostly on cost cuts and increased efficiencies to deliver the few things that they are delivering to the marketplace that they're focused on. But the key is just to have the information at your fingertips so that you can make these decisions on an ongoing basis and in a more real-time fashion. So some of the benefits is to be able to evaluate product performance, increase your efficiency, improve your competitive ranking by being able to track market trends and align your portfolio with them, to have centralized data where you can evaluate all this and also be able to determine and prepare for risks out here. So the key is you want to make decisions in line with the reality of your product successes or lack thereof. So the components of product portfolio management is a company looks at existing products and assess how well they're meeting co company goals, meaning do they align with the strategies and are they helping the organization achieve the strategies that were uh, our executives are, have set out for us at a higher level. And management that focuses too narrowly on a single goal may overlook factors because there's a lot of interdependent things that we have to consider when we make these decisions. And similarly, a company that leans too hard on one product may have nowhere to turn if that product uh, eventually declines and they have to find that new horse to ride as they go through. Now, portfolio management software, which we're going to get into with one plan, uh, have common features that we look at. You got to have data analytics because that's what part of this is all about. You got to have pro to product roadmap tools, risk management features, budget tracking and resource allocation to understand do we have the funds and the, and the resources to do it. Scheduling, time tracking, portfolio ranking tools as we evaluate alternatives. So those are some of the things that you want to have in a portfolio management solution. Now, one plan provides such a solution and even extends this to the more strategic realm. Um, one plan does provide strategic capabilities to put strategic plans in place by the business leaders for the organization, which are uh, kind of our, our, our North Star, our guidepost to where we want to go overall. It provides execution tools for executing on the portfolio at a detailed level, whether it be with backlogs or schedules. And then it also provides tools for the product leaders as they manage the actual individual product lines or any technology supported around those. And one plan brings all these together into a common solution. So one plan really connects from the strategy level all the way down to the execution level. And the modules we have is different portfolio capabilities and a variety of flexible portfolio management, whether they be in traditional views, more agile type of portfolio boards, or even roadmap views that are automatically generated. And we'll also talk today about a modeling capability for what if analysis. We also have to factor in, do we have the resources to do these things? And having resource capacity plans uh, in place is very helpful because it um, because it, when it's in context of the overall portfolio work to be done. Financial planning to make sure that we have the budget to do the things that we want to do or to prioritize to fit within certain budgets. 
Now, on the execution side, one plan has planning tools within itself. So, so if you want to do waterfall type of planning, you can on the left hand side. On the right hand side, we have more agile planning where you can put backlogs and sprint plans in place. And then also consistent status reporting that is a natural output of working the portfolio within here. And if you like having your resources who are working on these particular in initiatives have one place to go to either uh, report status on the work they're accomplishing, backlog items or tasks, for example, or report time against those things and even get insights into how they're doing and things that require their attention. These are all part of the one plan solution that can be used very capably in a product oriented type of fashion. The other piece, when we talk about ideation and innovation, you know, demand comes from many sources, but in a product orientation, it's really more about ideation uh, in that area. And one plan provides a place for you to capture those, to capture the data points you'd like around those, and in one place, be able to evaluate and prioritize and decide which things you'd like to promote into things that you'd actually like to work on and fund within your organization. We even have analysis and reporting around that so you can do some more detailed analysis on the qualitative and quantitative natures of these ideas uh, in the organization such that you can work on the right things and make sure you make intelligent decisions accordingly. Now, the strategic plan for executives, it gives us the ability to put this in place. We may have objectives and key results as we see in this place that your executives may lay out. But on the other hand, that strategy, even though the executives may want to use this tool to execute and track this strategy and those strategies, we also have to align it with the project and product portfolios there to make sure that we're in alignment with the organization and where we're going. And so that the organization can see are the things that are we are executing on to support those strategies, what's the health of those and are we tracking to actually achieve the things we set out to do? Now, as we have all these interdependencies and associations, whether they be with projects and products and, 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 and strategies and resources, et cetera. Um, we need to be able to visualize how these things interrelate so that we can take all things into considerations that we need to factor in as we make our decisions. In this case, we have an objective runway that we have maybe have a certain objective or strategy and we see all the things downstream that are aligned with it whether they be certain products or projects or epics or applications for your products, et cetera, business capabilities. Um, the same thing holds true with projects. What are these projects aligned with and what things do we have to factor in and what's the health of the things we're dependent on or the things that are dependent on us? And the idea is one plan can provide us real-time views of these things as we analyze these things and make our decisions. Consistent status reporting we talked about, but it's important to understand where we stand as we choose to embark upon different initiatives. So with that, um, let's go into a demonstration of one plan and how you might do these things within here. Now, what I'm looking at right now is one method of doing portfolios. In this case, I have a product portfolio that in this product portfolio, I have product lines and I have products within those product lines. And as I look in here, I'm looking at you know, the Xbox products, the computer peripherals, the surface line, the video conferencing, and then products specifically within that. Now we can have a variety of views in here. In this case, I'm looking at a, a product summary, right? And I'm looking at uh, uh, some KPIs regarding each of these products and information like on who the lead is and what business unit, maybe what the budget and the benefits are. But for example, I could look at these in a variety of different ways. I could say, you know, let me look at the products by the different categories they're in. As I expand these out, I can see the categories that we have in those types of areas and what we might look at. And as we get down to this later on, we could look at things like financials. You know, we could look at uh, we could look at the prioritization about these things and be able to look at you know what methods we did and what scores we had to how we prioritize these different product areas uh, uh, in relation to one another and have different prioritization methods in place that we wanted to see done. Um, <clears throat> now, the different views that we might have in here also might be relate to more board or agile views. If I go drill into, say, a board view and I wanna look at, say, for example, um, a, a board by, say, product line. And here I can see the different product lines and cards in here with each of the different efforts that we have going on in the product areas. In this case, I'm looking at products, and I can even overlay swim lanes, for example, on 
the different teams that I have in here or other ways that I might want to cross uh, cross reference this and work on this and maybe even bring on different backlog items if I have them into the mix uh, as we look at these things by product line but once again once again flexible on how we look at these you might look at them in this case by a category say for example uh, and look at the dependencies across the way we have those things uh, uh, laid out and uh, interrelated and the same thing from a product management perspective we can very easily take a look at roadmaps here and some roadmaps in this case i've got them by the different product lines and the different products and we can also then focus and look at when maybe the different releases or maybe where the different features are being delivered across those different things and have these generated automatically and once again you can have flexible roadmaps that can be organized by different criteria as we go through so the idea here is, is this portfolio is flexible enough to handle the way you'd like to have those portfolio perspectives on your products. Now, if I was here, even no matter what view I'm in, um, if I was going to look at any particular item, say, for example, I could either do, say, a quick edit and pop out views of data uh, for any particular thing like this Xbox next gen and look at all the details around that very quickly and very easily pop back and forth between, say, this Xbox next gen details and maybe this Xbox one controller and get to the data around those things. Or right from here, I could drill specifically into that particular product. And if I go to say the details, I can get more of a full page view of those details I was just looking at and be able to look at the things that are in here, like the life cycle uh, of this particular product up above. And you can establish that as you see fit. The different data or metadata that you capture to categorize these things a description, and even things like uh, a product vision and strengths and opportunities and threats and missions and a lot of the characteristics you might have around uh, this uh, from more of a product canvas type of perspective. And the idea is that these forms here are configurable uh, to the data that you'd like to capture. And by the way, uh, we're going to talk about ideas and capturing those things. These things can be brought forward from an idea state and promoted into a product that we want to pursue at some point in time. Uh, very early on in that cycle so you can have a more of a funnel end to end now as i drill down here and i look at some key data around here i can look at some things not only about some key things about timelines and financials and overall health for example and kpis i can also see other things were associated like for example what personas uh, are this um, uh, is this product associated with in this case it's the gamer what competitors do we have in this marketplace? And I'm seeing the different uh, competitors that we have in here in Sony Electronics and, and Nintendo. You know, what uh, product project initiatives, product initiatives do we have and what are associated here? What initiatives do we have? And I have epics and projects in here that we're working on that are aligned to support this product. And you can have any other types of things. And you might have ideas that are out there that we're considering right now that uh, are aligned with this particular product that we haven't yet decided to do yet. And we can look at all those associations and even add more if we want to. So the key there is, is you can have all the detailed data you'd want to capture around this. Also, from a work planning perspective, we can come in here and look at this from a variety of um, um, perspectives. For example, we talked about a more agile approach. And here we have a backlog work type in the work plan that allows us, let me expand this real quick, to say maybe have features and user stories, for example, that we might work on in conjunction uh, with this. Now you can plan all this right here in one plan, uh, but also we can connect if you want to, to other agile tools. So for example, if you're doing this kind of work in something like Azure DevOps or Jira or some other tool that you'd like us to enable a connector for, we can connect that here and have that be the source of this information. Um, we can also do sprint planning in here. So for example, if I, wanted to come in here and uh, say show sprints. I can go back and show the sprints that we planned out and very quickly see the points or hours limits that I put on those things and click on and see which elements or backlog items are being performed in any one given sprint. So we have the ability to really flexibly build these uh, uh, backlogs and these agile plans right here in one plan or have it brought in from an agile tool that you're using today. We also have the concept of a schedule work type in here. So notice I've got a backlog and a schedule work type. The schedule work type might be for things that you don't necessarily keep in your backlog. For example, this might be a release plan so that leadership can see when we plan on releasing things or our stakeholders may wanna see those and be able to then look at, for example, specific things that we're going to uh, do within each one of those releases uh, 
uh, to deliver and communicate those out to the rest of the organization and or to your customers. On top of that, we can have resource planning capabilities in here. Well, let me go back to another work plan real quick. Uh, that being said, um, other work types we have in here is in one place we can manage your risk logs and your issue logs and your changes and your key decisions that you make. So you don't have to go to separate tools or separate lists anywhere else in, 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 in other technologies to do that. So for example, in this case, you can actually you know, log the different risks that you have within here. Like supply chain is, uh, is changing access to certain things. And so for example, I could very quickly go in here and look at the details around that and look at the risks and maybe the mitigation and contingency plan that we want to put in place for that. The key is, is that all those things can be managed right here in one plan. Resource capacity planning. Now, uh, this one gives us the ability to look at, you know, the resources that are required. We can plan in terms of hours or percentages or maybe full-time equivalents and see whether or not we have the resources to do those things with the resources that we intend to do. And if not, we can actually look at alternative candidates, for example, some overloaded resources that we might have. I might go down here and say, maybe I got to find a replacement for Jack Barker on this because he looks a little bit over allocated. Maybe I might find some matches and look for resources that actually have capacity that I can replace Jack with on here and do that type of analysis in here as well. On the financial side of things, we can look at budgets around this particular product and it can be detailed cost category oriented, um, both labor and non-labor alike. And we can actually plan on things like original budgets and maybe benefits and track those against each other and track those things against this product line uh, at, throughout its life cycle uh, as we go on through. On the reporting side of things, we talked about interrelations and all the associations that were there. Um, if I go into the reporting area and I click on the visualize capability, I can see this Xbox Next Gen is a plan that actually has to, you know, uh, you know that, that is a precursor to some other things that we're doing on in the organization here. Also on the runway to see what else we're associated with, you can see that this product Xbox Next Gen has projects and epics in here that are being executed to support that product. Also, from a strategic perspective, there are objectives or strategies here with tangible key results that are being measured that align with the projects and epics that are being done to support this strategy. So like we talked about earlier on, getting that more comprehensive focus about one product or one product line and how it fits in with everything else in the organization and how it ties in. And by the way, the things that we are tied in with if they're not healthy, for example, this has gone yellow and this has gone red, how we drill into those things right here and we can drill in at any given point in time and, 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 and drill through and get the information we need to do the further analysis that we see here. Once again, comprehensive, top to bottom, strategy, product and initiatives to uh, the resources and the financials that are required to make that happen. Now upstream to this, the ideas area that we talked about gives us the ability to submit ideas or requests um, to evaluate before we even think about doing those things. And even then we can do prioritization and prioritization scoring here uh, long before they become products or initiatives within our organization. So in this particular case, if I go into create more Xbox exclusive games, since we're on an Xbox theme here, uh, haven't quite developed this out yet, but here's where you can actually build business case information or other vision statements around that. And maybe even some of the associations get those aligned, what products or what key results were aligned with and have prioritization scores in here, whether they need more business driver related on whether how well it strategically aligns or is it something that's gonna make us more profitable uh, and align those things to, to, to drive uh, scores or maybe more agile metrics for prioritization, things like weighted shortest job first. The idea is you decide which metrics you want to capture around that. And then at any given point in time, you can promote this uh, to a, uh, a product or a project at any given point. So for example, if I decided we wanted to embark upon this, either through workflow or through using a reorganized feature with permissions to do this, you could actually take this idea and promote this to a product uh, at any given point in time and bring that and carry that forward with all the data we captured in the early stages of this ideation process. Now, taking that up to that strategic level that we talked about, 
you can establish your objectives and your key results in here. And when we look at this, let's just say one strategy was launch new product, uh, launch new products successfully. By drilling to that, you capture the things that you want to capture around this objective and the associations that you have with this. And you can see the key results that are involved below. So maybe one of the key results we have here is win best product of the year. As I drill into that best product of the year, I can see all the things it's associated with, including the initiatives that are being done to support that strategy and key result. And even the associated product in here, which is Xbox products, which is our key focus in this particular model. So the key here is one, if you can see here, the strategy is aligned down through the portfolio item or products and uh, the funnel for the ideas can feed into all of that as we go on through. Now, we talked about a resource plan for an individual product, but that being said, you may have a need to look at resources across the entire organization. Now, in our product development part of our organization, we may have all kinds of resources working on this that are part of teams that work on this. And as we can see in this particular demo model, I got a Jack Barker here in product development who is severely overloaded. It's because we put them on way too many projects or products. And the idea here is if I'd look at this more from an FTE perspective, I have him more than double booked here in the month of May. So this is where the kind of analysis would, uh, as we make decisions, we probably wouldn't put Jack on another thing if he was already this overloaded. Uh, but if he did find himself that overloaded, we could take him off of a product or an initiative and do those things and find alternatives like we talked about before and substitute him on those to keep ourselves balanced and making sure that we're working on things that fit within our capacity like we talked about. Now, with that, we do have something called the modeler. And the modeler really provides us with what if scenario capability uh, that, um, that we have within an organization. But essentially, you can decide when you create a model which products or initiatives you want to put into something like this, uh, into a model. And in that, we go into a completely what if mode in this model um, that uh, allows us to um, uh, decide alternatives as far as uh, what courses of action and what things we want to take on. In this particular case, in this model, we included all these different products in here that we want to consider doing. Now, um, in that, we might factor in things like, do we have the resources to do all the things in there? And in there, it looks like I'm looking pretty good from a resource perspective. But if I didn't have the resources to do this, if I was over constrained and some of these things were read, I might decide to take a lower priority um, product and maybe say, you know, maybe we don't do the video teleconferencing roundtable and it would dynamically change the resource allocation down below. Or I might say, you know, um, if I added a Gantt chart representation into here, I might take this and say, you know, this proposed thing that we're thinking about doing with ergonomic keyboards, maybe we delay that uh, out a little longer and say, maybe we push that out a quarter and let that re-rack the resource allocation down below and see, you know, that that fits. But we have the luxury right now of saying, hey, we have the resources to do what's in here. So maybe we don't have to do all this and we can accept this. But the alternatives of this, if we want to do that, and by the way, we can also do this with financial constraints too, to see if it fits within an overall budget for us and do the same types of constraint analysis. Now, in this case, I've got some models that have already been created. So in this case, let me pull up, say, what if we had a $58 million budget was a scenario that we saved. And if I had a $58 million budget, out of those 10 initiatives, I could only do seven of them. And uh, if I looked at, say, for example, a $68 million budget, say I could get $10 million more, I could do all but one of those things in that model. So meaning I could do nine out of the 10. And I might want to evaluate what the alternatives are or the analyze the difference between the two. So for example, I might see that at these two different budget levels, I the number of plans that I could do, the budget, I can see the dollars that were required. And in here, I can see the benefits. So in the benefits, for example, if I could get more dollars, I can get more benefits or return for the organization. Um, in this particular case, in this list, and I want to get more tangible on this, I can compare the two alternatives, look at the targets and say, you know, at these two levels of spend, $58 million and $68 million, at the $58 million, I can get $183 million of benefit. 
um, if I could find $10 more million dollars to invest, I could actually get 13 or 14 more million dollars of benefit. Might be worth it for me to go do that um, in, in certain cases if I could find the funding to do so. And I can then compare the details of each of these scenarios, like what is in and which, which is out, and what's the priorities of the different products as we go through each of these different things. So the idea here is, is that we can focus on analysis of these things and decide from the different save scenarios, and I can save as many of these as I like and determine an alternative before I decide to go um, um, execute on any one of these alternatives. Um, the other piece that I showed earlier on was the charting around this and be able to look at bubble charts down here. And you can determine, for example, in your benefits versus your prioritization. I could see that my prioritization scores, uh, high prioritization and high benefits, the sweet spot would be here in the upper right. And it looks like my biggest project has got a high budget, but not so high on the prioritization score. The idea is I can look at and evaluate these things at any given point in time and kind of do more further analysis on what the right things are to do and what we should include. Now, from an execution perspective, we do have the ability for your participants or your team members who work on these products to go to one place in one plan and be able to look at uh, all the different things that they're working on. In this particular case, I can see that I'm on a number of different products and I can see backlog items and tasks and things that I've been assigned to. Uh, and from one place, I can actually see what's on my plate and I can actually either check boxes to say I finished them, I can do things like percent completes, communicate new dates, and I can even do things like uh, uh, provide uh, comment threads on this and participate with other people that are involved in this particular backlog item, for example, or share notes, et cetera, with um, the product product manager or uh, scrum master, whoever might, whoever it might be. And I can look at these things from a variety of fashions. I can go in here and look at things by, oh, I don't know, by priority. Instead of looking at them by the individual product, maybe I can see what's normal priority versus maybe what's high priority. So the idea is that it doesn't look like I have anything critical here. So I can maybe go focus on the things as they, see, uh, as, as they seem to come up within the actual uh, product views. So um, once again, be able to participate this on a team member basis, allocate resources accordingly, and then be able to have your team members be able to provide you status on a seamless basis. Now, uh, in the portfolio, we may want to work on uh, things and look at things from a report perspective. You know, we talked about an ideas repository. So the ideas dashboard we can look at to slice through analysis on this where we could go in and maybe look at, um, let's see, the resource dashboard to understand maybe where we're over and under allocated, maybe look at different roles that we have or different departments that we have uh, and look at how we're doing, say, in product development and look at what that, look what that model looks like in the product development area, for example, and maybe even specifically down to individuals in product development, see how they're uh, allocated. And as you can see, Jack, once again, is showing over allocated. And then from your portfolio, if your portfolio is product oriented, you can look at the, um, the, the portfolio from another variety of uh, perspectives. So you could come in here and say, how's our portfolio doing and all our different product portfolios in here and how are they tracking from a financial perspective? Or how are they tracking from an overall KPI perspective and looking at uh, all the details around those? So once again, these are just samples of reporting. Uh, and then uh, since it is Power BI and it's just using one plan data, you can tailor these reports or even add ones of your own to the mix for your own analysis purposes. So with that, I think I'll go back to the slide presentation and wrap up. So let's talk about summary and next steps. So hopefully what we showed you today was at least a high level of that product portfolio management is an important discipline for organizations to adopt. And that one plan provides solutions capabilities for product and strategic portfolio management needs and bringing those things all together into one place. One plan also supports a variety of execution methodologies or frameworks and the most complete set of portfolio management capabilities on the Microsoft platform. And one plan does integrate with other tools and solutions. We focused on the things in one plan today, uh, but we do have a webinar next week that will talk about some integration and, uh, and, and doing those things as well. You know, we're really passionate about this portfolio management uh, discipline. Uh, 
Uh, Microsoft has recognized us as their project and portfolio management uh, partner of the year globally. Uh, uh, and we've been recognized um, the last four years running. And even the analysts like Gartner and Infotech uh, recognize us for the innovation and the things that we're doing in this arena. Now, we do offer free trials. And one of the free trials that we do have is our product portfolio management template. So in here with product portfolio management, you can go out to AppSource and go get that product portfolio management template. You can either go to www.appsource.com or you can get it directly from us at oneplan.ai slash solutions. And we're happy to chaperone you on these trials too. So if you request a trial and you want us to guide you a little bit and give you an overview and maybe talk to you a little bit more about your unique requirements, let us know. We're happy to support you. We're glad to engage with you. To that end, we can also do a free roadmap workshop for you. If you're not ready to trial it, but we understand, you want to understand what it's going to take to get into a solution like this from the place that you're at today, we're happy to talk to you about your requirements, your current state, and give you an idea of what that would look like, and maybe even a total cost of ownership. You may own a bunch of the tools and technologies you already need, so it may be just an incremental investment on your part. So free trial, we'd love to engage and support you and chaperone you on that, the roadmap workshop. If you're not ready to do all that yet, and what I gave you today was a very high level demo, uh, engage with us and we're happy to schedule a personalized one-on-one -on -one demo that focuses more on your particular pain points and your needs and your requirements and use cases. You can reach out to us at contact at oneplan.ai uh, for a general um, uh, reach out and request. Or if you just wanna research a little bit more, go to www.oneplan.ai and there's a lot of resources and information out there about, uh, about our solutions and our technology. So with that, I'd like to thank you for taking time out of your busy day today. Um, uh, we really would like to engage with you. If there's anything you saw here that shows potential and we didn't go deep enough, please let us know. But in any event, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, it's all about bringing all these capabilities together. You know, strategy, product, portfolio, execution, you know, agile planning, reporting, re resource management, financials. Uh, all of that, bringing that together under one roof and, and that portfolio modeling for what if capability. We call that the power of one. And we'd like to show you how one plan brings that power all together and how it can bring it together for you. So in that power of one, we have one interface, one experience, all in one plan. Thank you again and have a great day.